All right, the NFL Combine just took place over the past several days. You know, I'm sure we all, you know, took a look at that and watched it and were really locked in to see what guys would perform and what guys would uh, underachieve. So uh, today I just want to take a look at a few guys, not a few, more than a few, uh, several guys that I thought did an excellent job at the NFL Combine and uh, are definitely worthy of talking about today. So. We're going to look at uh, offensive lineman uh, Andre Dillard, uh, tackle from Washington State University. I thought he ran a very good 40-yard dash uh, relative to his size. He, w- he was moving a little bit uh, for a big guy. Uh, I thought he did you know, very well in all of the movement drills that they have for the offensive lineman. Uh, like I said before, he's a bigger guy. So uh, the 40 isn't as big of a deal for him. But to see a, a big guy run and move like that is very uh, exciting and very encouraging to see. Uh, moving on to the other drills that he did, I mean, I thought he, he looked good in all the drills that they had. looked like he could move very well. And, you know, when I'm looking at offensive linemen, I'm, I'm really looking at how well they can move. I mean, a lot of those guys are strong. Uh, you're expected to be big and strong. Uh but a lot of them aren't fast. A lot of them aren't athletic. And I'm not saying that's the end all be all. But those are some of the things that I look at when I'm looking at offensive linemen. If you can stand out to me on film as a superior athlete, especially with uh, a lot of the uh, edge rushers that we have coming in in the draft. And those guys are getting a lot more faster, more athletic. You have to have those tackles and those offensive linemen that can match up with those guys. Uh, I didn't know much about him going into the draft. I don't follow offensive linemen as closely, but, you know, uh, just watching that guy on film, uh, Andre Dillard from Washington State, he he really stood out as one of the uh, uh, primetime performers. He, he performed really well. I think he did decently on the bench press, which isn't a true – depiction of how strong you are but you know if you can do well and push 225 a a decent amount of times then you are strong to some extent so Andre Dillard man he he, as far as offensive lineman he was a guy that you know when I was watching he he really stood out and I think any any team that needs a tackle uh it wouldn't be a bad thing to uh, consider this guy in the first round because he he shows some things that that are really good so moving on, uh, defensive linemen, and more in particular, the interior guys. Hey, Quentin Williams, man, I mean, he's he's been talked about a lot, you know, from the jump. Uh, you know, he, he's, he's been on everybody's radar as one of the top picks coming out in the draft. I thought he ran very well in the 40-yard dash for a guy his size. He is over 300 pounds. Uh, and, I mean, if you look at him, he doesn't look terribly. He's not sloppy in any uh, shape, form, or fashion. So he looks like he can move well. Uh, In the movement drills, he he, he slipped up a couple times. I mean, that's not shocking, but just looking at his movement skills, uh, those are the things that I'm looking at. Looking at him going over the bags and how quickly he can pick up his feet uh, and and maneuver and not get tripped up uh, as as, uh, often as you would think from a big guy really impressed me. Uh, Him coming off the line of scrimmage and, you know, being in the corner and showing, you know, how athletic he is uh, in particular drills really impressed me. And I think he uh, lived up to the hype, uh, you know, regarding his combine performance and what he did on the field this year for Alabama. Like I said, in all the change in direction drills, he really looked good for a guy his size, over 300 pounds. And in all honesty, I don't think he should be counted out as a number one pick going into this draft. I don't think he will be, but to uh, discount him as a guy that won't go number one is truly uh, doing a disservice to the type of player that he is and the talent that he has and how he performed in his combine. So if I'm Arizona, I mean, I'm not saying I would personally pick him number one overall, but I would be considering it, and I don't think it's a stretch to say that he's the best defensive lineman in this draft, and he could potentially be a really effective player, more than effective. I'm talking like a perennial pro bowler, you know, during the time of his career. So he did a really good job in it at the combine. Uh, like I said, it showed up on film. So I do think he's the type of guy where uh, his performance uh, at the combine will translate to the next level. 
All right, another guy we're going to look at is Montez Sweat, and he was the guy that everybody was talking about. He's a big guy, defensive or edge rusher. He ran a 4-4 in the 40-yard dash, which was super impressive, especially for a guy his size. I thought his movement drills were, were really good, uh, considering his size and the position that he plays. He wasn't super duper clean, but he looked a little stiff at times. But I mean, just looking at the, the foot speed, the quickness, the ability to not get tripped up, the, the ability to stick his foot in the ground and change direction, it really, really was impressive for a guy his size. Uh, in my opinion, I mean, as far as, you know, what I personally look for in an edge rusher, I mean, I know everybody's talking about Nick Bosa, but. I wouldn't be surprised if, if, if some team were willing to take the chance on a Montez Sweat type of player because he's got the length, he's got the speed, he's got the, the athleticism. I mean, one thing you might question with him is just his overall girth and how big he is and how that would affect him in the run game. But, man, he is a superior athlete probably than 98% of the – tackles that he's going to be going against and if he's big enough to hold up in the run he's a guy that you can move around and would be very versatile you know move him around inside as a three technique uh move him on either side as a, of the field as an edge player uh he's a guy that you know like i said shows superior athleticism uh he was one of the guys there's another guy that i'm going to talk about here in a second but uh if he's big enough and strong enough to hold up uh, in the interior, I think he's a guy that you can move around and, and, and play in, in, in different spots. And then in that situation, he becomes invaluable because, hey, we can move him to a tackle position. We can move him as a shade. We can put him on either side as an edge. And you really it's really difficult to game plan against him because he's all over the place. So Montez Sweat had a very impressive day. He really stood out to me uh, in the combine. And I think he's going to do some good things uh, at the next level depending on where he's drafted. So it's a good, good day by him. Moving on to Florida State defensive lineman Brian Burns, who essentially one-upped uh, Montez Sweat. Uh, he didn't run as fast as him, but just looking at how smooth he is as a runner, he looked a lot smoother and not as stiff as Montez Sweat. He looked very smooth. He was able to change direction a lot quicker. He was able to flip his hips and get going in a different direction a lot quicker than Montez Sweat. So when you you know talk to me about uh, these guys, I think either one would be be very good in any situation. It just depends on the preference of the person that's picking. Both of those guys are extremely, extremely good edge rushers, and I don't think it's out of the question for either one of those guys to be the first edge rushers taken in this year's draft. Like I said, the question is whether they can hold up against the run and whether they have enough size and girth to do that. But as far as athleticism, those two are clearly superior. I'm moving on to Devin Bush from Michigan, linebacker. And this guy, he was, you know, looking at that 40-yard dash, he was moving. He ran a 4-4-4, and I wouldn't be shocked uh, if, and you know, I wouldn't be shocked if he could run or has run something lower than that. He is very explosive just looking at his get-off. And you can tell he ran track or he had, he knows how to run. He can really, really run uh, to the drill portion of things. He was quick feet, quick feet. You can just look at it, how he moves, doesn't have an issue changing direction at all. Like I said, straight line speed is exceptional. Uh, like I said, drill portion, he didn't have a, a problem moving at all, changing direction at all. Uh, this is one of his strengths. And it's shocking because he's such a, I don't want to say he's a big guy, but just looking at his body type, he's a little bit a little bit chubby, a little bit chunky. But he is an exceptional athlete. Uh, he did, you know, pretty well uh, on the bench press as well. So I don't think he's a weak guy. Uh, like I said, depending on what you're looking for in a linebacker, if you're looking for a guy that's an athlete that can run a little bit, uh, can make all types of plays all over the field, and that's not necessarily a A-gap to A-gap run plugger uh i think devin bush would probably be the guy uh as opposed to a uh, devin white or josh allen you know who are both good players but just watching it just watching all three of those guys go at it and uh do their workouts i thought devin bush kind of stood out for me personally uh, looking at the quarterback position, I thought uh, Dwayne Haskins, especially with uh, Kyler Murray not being there, I thought Dwayne Haskins did a, a really, really good job. He didn't hurt himself 
uh, throughout the day. Um, one of the things that a lot of people talk about with uh, Dwayne Haskins is his arm strength, and I think it was on display during the combine. Uh, I did a video on him uh, prior, you know, a few weeks back, you know, actually a couple months back now, you know, just highlighting how strong his arm is. I mean, it's effortless. He really doesn't have any uh, – flaws in his game he doesn't not saying he doesn't have any flaws but he doesn't as far as him throwing the ball with velocity and uh strength i mean he he's the best in this draft at that he has a, a powerful cannon for a right arm and he's fairly accurate as well i mean he didn't look erratic at all he had good ball placement he puts the ball exactly where it needs to be and i thought he did a good job throughout the day of just doing what he did on film. I mean, if you've watched the film of Dwayne Haskins, there's no shock that, you know, he was going to perform at the combine the way he did. Uh, like I said, the spotlight was more so on him uh, because of uh, Kyler Murray not being there. And and that's okay. I mean, I think that's a good thing, you know, for him to be in that spotlight and for him to uh, have to show his ability in that situation. And I'm not saying every pass was completed. I mean, that's not realistic, especially in this type of uh, atmosphere, in this type of situation uh, where you just got to go out there and, and throw the ball and you don't really have any familiarity with the guys you're throwing to or the concepts and routes that are run. You know, it's not it's not really realistic to complete everything. But as far as what he was given and, and, and what he did, I thought he, you know, like I said, had very good velocity on a lot of his passes. He was very accurate, and, uh, you know, I'm not – I saw a few people talking about his 40-yard dash time, and, uh, I mean, it was really irrelevant. I don't I don't care if he's uh, uh, a five-flat guy or a 4-7, four, 4-8, four, 4-9 four, guy. It didn't matter to me because that's not the strength of his game. To be honest, I don't even think it mattered with Kyler Murray, and that's, uh, you know, more so his lane. If you can run past guys, you can run past guys and keep plays alive at the quarterback position, and it's clear to see. You don't need a 40-yard dash to prove that. So, like I said, Dwayne Haskins had a, a pretty good day. Uh, he didn't do anything to hurt himself, and uh, I'm really excited to see what he does in at Ohio State's pro day. And moving on to the defensive backs, we got Byron Murphy, who I thought, in my opinion, stood out uh, amongst all of the other guys. Uh, his 40-yard dash wasn't – blazing or anything but don't get me wrong a four five is not slow uh his four, first time was a four five five i believe but the thing i was looking for was how he would look in his his uh field work and looking at him man he's smooth backpedaler he doesn't waste a lot of motion uh he flips his hips ex extremely well he was very clean flipping his hips in both directions i mean he it was it was like it was easy it was like clockwork like it wasn't. It was almost effortless for him looking at it, and I, I, that stood out to me in all the drills. Uh, just his footwork, his 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 hips. He wasn't stiff at all. It was very fluid, very smooth, and he was able to turn and uh, get going in the opposite direction. Really good at change of direction skills and all that stuff. Um, like I said, and if you have a guy that can do that, that is really good at changing direction. And is really good at uh, uh, flipping his hips and things like that. It'll make up for that tenth of a second in the forty-yard dash. You know, with him not running a four-four and him running a four-five. I mean, his click point drive was was extremely good. I thought, you know, one underrated things he did is I thought he caught the ball extremely well. Now it's not. I don't want to say it's not a requirement, but he's not a receiver at the end of the day. But you would like to see your DBs have excellent ball skills and be able to make a play once the ball is in the air and when they did that gauntlet drill i believe he caught the ball better than a lot of the receivers that were even at the combine and, i mean it was it was pretty much effortless and uh you know he showed that he had that ability he had those ball skills he had the ability to catch the ball while moving so uh in, and even in his uh field workout he showed uh in those drills that he was able to catch the ball uh, did a pretty good job on the uh, bench press as well. I don't think that's as big of a deal for a defensive backs, but you you like to see that strength. It's not the end all be all if you go out there and 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 put up eight reps, and it's it's not making you better if you go out there and put up twenty reps. It's just a test for strength, and 
uh, fortunately, at that position is not uh, overly necessary, I'd say. And then finally, the guy that everybody's been talking about, the guy that blew up all over Twitter was DK Metcalf, who I've done a video on before, so check it out when you get a chance. But uh, I think he came into the combine and did everything that people that have watched him expected him to do. Uh, I've said before, like even in my video, you know, my scouting report on DK Metcalf, I thought he would run a 4-3. And he ran a low 4-3, so that tells me that that kid, he could probably even run a 4-2 if he really, if, you know, on a good day. Uh, I know some people uh, questioned his hands. I thought he did a heck of a job catching the ball. You can tell he has natural hands, very strong, solid hands, and he's confident in his hands. Uh, also, some people question his change of direction and his quickness based on his three-cone drill and stuff like that. And I'll tell you this, I saw that man run a, a a dig route. I think it was about a 15-yard, 20-yard dig route. And he got in and out of his break in three steps. So uh, just watching him actually run routes, I have no issue with how quick he is or whether or not he can get out of his breaks. I'm looking at, you know, the, the skill set first and foremost. Is it uh, transferable to the NFL? Then I'm looking at the practical application of that skill set. Whether or not he can go in and run routes, whether or not he can go and catch the ball uh, in certain situations. So, like I said before, he caught the ball naturally. He caught the ball with confidence. He displayed soft hands. So, I'm not worried about his hands at all. And in the route running portion, he ran excellent routes. He was able to get in and out of breaks pretty effortlessly. And especially considering his size and his speed. You know, he was a fast, big guy, and he did an excellent job of getting in and out of his break. So I, I never thought that was an issue just watching the entire combine, and I didn't think it was an issue on film because he definitely has the skill set to do those things. So, I mean, you know, we talked about it the whole time. Everybody was on Twitter talking about DK Metcalf and his performance, and I don't think it's just a fluke. I think he has the skill set that translates – and, you know, uh, he proved that he does, and he validated everything with his performance at the Combine. So that's that. So that's my take on uh, the 2019 NFL Combine. Those are the guys that I thought stood out. And, uh, I mean, let me know what you guys think down in the comments. And, uh, you know, let's, let's, let's get a dialogue going. I mean, I thought the uh, Combine was really really uh entertaining for me personally over the next uh several weeks we'll be uh uh getting ready for the nfl draft and putting out more videos for that so uh thanks for watching and peace